Bitcoin is about to undergo one of the biggest changes to the network in the last four years. In fact, this is a massive change that happens every four years, just like clockwork, programmed into the Bitcoin blockchain called the Bitcoin having. And many hypothesize this is one of the biggest factors that contributes to the price of Bitcoin going up. And one of the biggest reasons that the crypto markets in general go crazy pretty much every four years like clockwork, underpinning the backbone of the four-year crypto cycle thesis. And it's happening again. At the time of recording this video, the Bitcoin halving is just a month away. So what's going to happen? Is this going to send Bitcoin to the moon? How does this work? Is there still time to get ahead of this big change? You know, have you completely missed out? Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about in this video today. As a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis, has been in the crypto markets day in, day out ever since 2017. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to take advantage of all the crazy opportunity that's happening in crypto right now, the absolute best way to do that is to become a blockchain developer. And I can show you to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Obviously, nothing I'm saying in this video is designed to be a financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. But we have one of the biggest events in all of crypto happening next month, known as the Bitcoin halving, okay? So what exactly is this? Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you even think you understand how it works. But let me give you a brief summary. Well, basically, this is all about the new amount of Bitcoin hitting the market every single day essentially gets cut in half, okay? That's the halving. So let me explain that further. So see, Bitcoin is what's called a proof of work blockchain, which means that anytime you use the Bitcoin network, let's say you send Bitcoins from one wallet to another, uh, you submit that transaction to the Bitcoin blockchain, just like this, okay? And the Bitcoin blockchain is made up of thousands of different computers that run the network. Uh, they run the same software redundantly, and these computers are called nodes that all talk to one another, okay? And the mining nodes in the network are the ones that are responsible for recording your transactions to the blockchain, okay? And these miners are basically incentivized to run the network because they get paid to do it, all right? They get paid in two different ways. One is by the transaction fee that you're sending to the network, and the other is by brand new Bitcoins that are actually spit out by the blockchain and pay the people who are running these computers, okay? That's called the block reward. And that block reward is programmed into the blockchain. Only a certain number of Bitcoins are created every single day. And every four years, that number of coins is created every single day gets cut in half, hence the Bitcoin having. And so you can see a graph of this issuance drop over time. So you can see every four years, the block reward gets cut in half, hence the inflation rate goes down. And every four years, you know, until the last Bitcoins get mined, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. And some quick stats on the amount of Bitcoin hitting the market every single day. So as of now, the block reward is 6.25 coins per block, and it's going to get reduced down to 3.125 coins per block post having. Okay, so basically the amount of blocks that are produced a day is approximately 144. So some quick math is, is about 900 Bitcoin hitting the blockchain every single day. And that's going to go down in half to about 450 Bitcoin after the halving. So when is this going to happen? Okay, well, the estimated date for this is going to be on April 20th, 2024. So it's about a month away at the time of recording this video. And you have to understand that date is an estimate. Okay, so why is that? Well, basically, the halving is programmed to happen at a certain block number. Okay, and you have to understand there's a rough amount of time that it takes for a block to get created on the network. And there's some variability in that. So what we're doing is taking the average block time and then just multiplying that out by the number of blocks it's going to take to achieve that. And hence, we arrive at this date. So there could be a little bit of variability on this exact time. All right, so what's going to happen to the Bitcoin price? Again, none of this is designed to be financial advice, but there's a lot of speculation about this, okay? So a lot of the thesis behind the impact of the halving on Bitcoin's price comes from basic supply and demand economics, okay? Anytime you have something that has, you know, a limited supply and, you know, a certain amount of demand, then whenever you start tweaking those two variables, something's going to happen to the price. So basically, if you increase the demand and the supply stays the same, the price goes up. Likewise, if you keep demand stable and you decrease the supply, like the halving, then the price would go up. And if you put the two together where you decrease the supply and the demand increases, then the price goes up exponentially. And that's the basic thesis on why the Bitcoin halving has an impact on the price of Bitcoin. Now, it should also note that whenever the halving happens, the amount of Bitcoin doesn't actually decrease. It's just that the inflation rate decreases. And so if we look at what's happened to the price of Bitcoin in the past, whenever other halvings have happened, pretty much the price has trended up uh, significantly post-halving. And again, past performance is not an indication of future performance. 
But we can see here in the first halving, okay, here's what the price of Bitcoin was, and this is what happened after. Okay, here's the second halving. Here's the price of Bitcoin was. It dipped right after the halving happens. I think because people got, you know, the idea that that was going to have an impact, so they sold the news. But then quickly after the price went parabolic, and the third halving, obviously we don't have the uh, numbers here, but this was in you know 2020, and that was right before Bitcoin made a 6x price move into 2021. And so also if you notice on this chart, you know these halvings are roughly four years apart. And the parabolic crypto cycles that followed after were also about four years apart, okay? And a lot of people use this as justification for saying that, hey, you know, the halving happens and then Bitcoin goes parabolic after. And whenever Bitcoin goes parabolic, pretty much other cryptocurrencies follow suit. And therefore, the halving is one of the biggest factors in causing these four-year crypto cycles. And so we're about to see if that's going to play out again. Now, that's sort of the conventional wisdom on the street. Now, what do I personally think about this? First of all, you know, this cycle in crypto is definitely playing out a lot differently than we've seen in other cycles in the past. It's really hard to gauge exactly what's going to happen next. One of the reasons is that we have the first all-time high on Bitcoin before the Bitcoin halving. So that's got to make you think a little bit. One reason for that is potentially because we have the Bitcoin ETS now. And we saw a lot of people trying to front run that opportunity before the ETS went live. And now the ETS are live, we're seeing a significant amount of inflows into Bitcoin from these products, which could be a huge reason why we're seeing increased demand. Therefore, you know, quicker rise in price before the halving. But it is one market force that, you know, kind of throws things off from what we've seen in the past. Now, another thing you have to understand is that anytime price goes up, there's rarely one reason that governs the entire thing. There's lots of different reasons. The ETFs could be one. Another could just be anticipation for a crypto cycle. But my big thought on the halving is that when you're talking about supply and demand, okay, great. The supply going down, or at least the inflation rate going down, can of course have an impact on the price of Bitcoin. But my view is that the demand side of the equation is way more important. Because if we're talking about just going down from 900 Bitcoin per day to 450 Bitcoin per day, that's not a huge inflation rate decrease relative to the entire supply. And while it could have some impact on the price, the demand for people really hungry for gains is going to be the more important side of the equation. And for this reason, okay, so when we've seen, uh, you know, the, the, the all-time high reach before the Bitcoin having, and combine that with the thought that the demand is more important than the inflation rate going down, that I think it's probably less likely that the halving is really governing the four-year crypto cycles as much as it just takes time in between cycles after an asset has gone down before people are willing to really take risks to continue the next wave of expansion. And so what do I think is going to happen with the Bitcoin price? Well, nobody really knows in the short term, but you know, I am bullish on the Bitcoin price over the next, you know, let's say six to 12 months. Again, I'm not saying all the way out to 12 months, if things get really crazy really fast, <laughs> that would cause me to be a lot more cautious. And it's hard to say exactly what effect the halving is going to have on this. But I do think we're firmly out of, you know, bear market territory where people are optimistic that Bitcoin can hit its new all-time high and really confidently break beyond it within the time window that I just talked about, issuing into a new wave of kind of mania for crypto. All right, so that's an overview of the Bitcoin halving that's coming up in just about a month away from the time of recording this video. That's exactly how it's going to work. That's what people on the street think is going to do to the Bitcoin price. And those are some of my personal thoughts. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is Bitcoin going to moon before the halving? Is it going to keep crashing? Are we going to see Bitcoin moon after the halving, just like we've seen in other cycles past? Are we locked into the four-year crypto cycle? Is the halving really the thing that's pulling the strings behind the curtain? I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. And whenever you're finished, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to take advantage of all the crazy opportunity that's happening in crypto right now, the absolute best way is to get up close and personal with this technology by becoming a blockchain developer so that you can break into the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, create your own projects, trading bots. There's all kinds of ways to earn passive income. I can show you do that step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappadversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.